Hi, Casey O'Brien here. Hello, Casey O'Brien. <laughs> I'm going to email to all the directors, let them know when. Did it go with this? A big, big, uh, big registration numbers. Really hoping that that um that we have you know we we had such poor attendance for the last one, so I want to make up for it. Partly because we we had got some wires crossed and with uh, MVC and all that stuff, but I think also tech is just I don't know. It's it's been something. Uh, it's been a sell from the get go. Carter really, she really believes in it, and I, and I, I taught a couple of classes for in it, and uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just one of those things that's just never really caught on with our membership. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I have to say that I'm, uh, um, I really don't understand the educational value of it, um, but, um, but I, Margaret believes in it. I believe in Margaret, so. Yeah. Michael, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on mute. I'll be here, though, okay? Okay, doke. Okay. I welcome you all to the um, CCDC wrap-up. It is um, part of the 2014 webinar series from the CyberWatch Center. My name is Portia Pusey, and I um, produce a series for Cyber Watch Center. Um, we wanted to have this um, this particular webinar for those of you who are new to cyber, uh, to the um, national um, CCC and the regional CCCs and the um, and qualifiers, so that you could get a chance to um, understand what's going on and maybe get a feel for it. And so this this um, webinar series is recorded so that people who can get a chance to understand it. But another reason. And why? For those of you who are experienced, um, every year there's things that the regional directors and the national directors observe that um, they share that maybe we can help um, uh, make your team stronger and um, and and help you have a better CCDC experience. And so we're including um, this um, webinar series for you experienced folks as well. Is the director, uh, the executive director of CyberWatch, and he ordinarily models our webinar series, and he'll be in very soon. Um, and so I'm just going to take over until he comes in. Remind you all that, um, in case you're interested, the National Cyber Watch uh, Center does a webinar series um, every month. And next month, we're talking about the um, Work Workforce Framework 2.0. It's going to be a really great, um, uh, informative um, webinar. And we hope that you'll be there. May um, third, um, twenty, and uh, at eleven o'clock. Question during the webinar series. Um, drop it in the chat, and I'll try to introduce it as quickly as possible. Um, I'm just muting a few loudies. Um, and uh, and so, if you have a question, just drop it in the chat, and I'll try to um, uh, address. I drop it into. I'll try to introduce it into the um, to the speakers as soon as I can. We heard all of these sessions, um, and so I would like to just let you know that you'll all be receiving a thank you email from the National Cyber Web Center, and um, and we link to the recording. Please feel free to share it. Um, we are glad um, to produce these so that um, this is good information for you have for a while, and so feel free to share that email. Um, before we get to the agenda, I'd like the regional directors who have joined us today to have a chance to introduce themselves and you get to hear their voices. Um, uh, uh, they are very kind and um, have spent a lot of time with um, this, the, um, the, the team and um, they have a lot of good information to share. Um, we'll start with Amelia. Hey, this is Amelia Phillips. I am the regional director for the Pacific Rim. So that is Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. Hey. Okay. Oh, go ahead. You could go in. Uh, we had what twelve colleges and universities this year, and two high schools that were there for about five hours. So about 
230 people involved altogether, including the Washington National Guard, some Spay War folks, and of course our Idaho State uh, guys, Niatech, guy and gals, supporting us. So it was a really cool two days. Um, Vinny Nestor is in for Brian Hay. Vinny, welcome. I'm sitting in for Brian Hay, the regional director for the large CCM. Uh, Hi, Bill. For the uh, North Shore region. Lewis. Oh, I thank Kyle and <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Leitner, I'm the uh, director for the Mid Atlantic uh, DC. This is Jansen, Western Regional CCDC. And, um, is there any other regional directors that are on that I have missed and have uh, in and that especially if you're a call in user, have I missed anyone? No, this is Gurky. I'm Regional for the Midwest. So yeah, I was just going to say that um, I, I thought David was going to join us, and there's David Durkee. Terrific, right on you. The, the last person we have to introduce himself is Dwayne Williams from the National CCDC. Uh, Dwayne Williams is the director of the National CCDC. I'm also one of the creators of the CCDC event and the competition system. I work with the Center for Infrastructure Assurance and Security out at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Why don't you give us, a, especially for the new players, an overview of the of the um, the tier CDC as well as the um, an overview of the different elements that go into a, a CCDC event. Uh, Portia, were you, were you asking for me or Kyle to do that? Sorry, I think Kyle. I'm at Dwayne. Yeah, you did, no problem. This is uh, Dwayne Williams. I'll, I'll take over. I want first. I want to say. Uh, thank you to Portia and Casey and the rest of the folks at the National Cyber Watch Center for doing this webinar based around CCDC so we have an opportunity to kind of talk about it and, and spread the message, if you will. And so before I get started, I want to say thanks to the regional directors that are online. Those of you that are not familiar with the small amount of effort it takes to upon a CCDC event, uh, these regional directors really do this as a labor of love. There's no huge paycheck that goes with it for them. They don't get, you know a medal or anything like that. They're doing it because they believe in the program and they believe in the education that it provides. So I'll say thank you to them before I get started on my, my little splurge. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of things here. I've got a couple of minutes worth of material that I'll cover. Uh, there is, of course, a website, as there is with everything else. It's nationalccdc.org. Uh, that is the, the main website, if you will. Each region has its own website, but you can uh, jump either directly to theirs or back to the national site where you'll find information about each regional, the event, the global rule set that's used throughout the competition, some background information, um, who the winners were for the past couple of years. And all that one. So what is CCDC? Um, essentially, CCDC is a, a tiered competition structure. So think March Madness but with computers. So it's essentially an inherent and operate and defend competition. So level of the event, going starting from the qualifier events that go through the regional events that come to the nationals, Every team inherits a small network, and every team inherits the same network at each event, but the networks are different between events. So the qualifier will have one network, the regionals will have a different network, each region has its own network, they come to the nationals and there's even a different network there. Typically those networks are a small business, but it could be a hospital, a government agency, a prison. That's one of the fun things that the regional directors do is they create uh, entities that allow the students to kind of explore and, and look at different um, the aspects of different organizations and the security concerns of those, uh, involved in those organizations. So the team job at each level is to secure the network that they've inherited, defend the red team, the critical sources that they've been asked to maintain, whether it's an e-commerce site, web server, mail server, DNS, and so on, uh, run the business tasks that we call injects, and manage remote employees and users. So we just finished wrapping up our ninth season of the CCDC Play. Um, congratulations to the University of Central Florida, who's our 2014 national champion. So if you get started in CCDC, the key is really the regional events. Your team must register with your region or the uh, region that you're going to compete in. Uh, the contact information for those regional directors and to their events are posted on nationalcc.org. 
replica replicated out on each region has their own website that you can go to and get more up-to-date information. But you have to go through those regions. Uh, so regions currently have qualifying events. They're virtual on events. All top teams from the qualifiers move on to the regional. Winner from each regional comes to the national championship. So there is no direct entry into the national championship. You've got to work your way up the bracket by going through the qualifier, if applicable, your regional event, and then the winner of the regional gets to come to the national championship. We have uh, currently 10 regions around the country. Uh, they're managed by regional directors, which you were introduced earlier. Um, many in the competition system uh, work together to promote and refine the rules. So there's been some confusion about um, is this a separate event or is that a separate event? Yes, there are regional directors that run and manage their events, but we are all part of that same CCC competition system, and we work together. Uh, we work together to refine the rules, agree on how we're going to do things. Um, they'll see some variations between regions. Uh, because we allow them to, the system allows for that so that we can have people do experiments and see if something should get adopted at a national scale or not. So your region may have some unique little uh, twist to it one year that you may not see replicated throughout the rest of the event. So we, we have allowed within the system some flexibility so that people can experiment and bring new ideas and new technologies and new capabilities to the rest of the CCDC competition. So we have Expert, if you will, that we decide, hey, we're going to carry this forward or not. So every CCDC event does use the same basic rule set. We use the same scoring methodology. Uh, you gain points by keeping your services up and running, fighting the business tasks that we call injects, taking to the users or remote employees. You lose points off your score due to red team's actions and service level agreements if your services are down uh, for a certain period of time. So the cons themselves are all kind of structured the same way. As I said, you'll see subtle differences. From one to the next, that's fine. The core rule set and the core functionality and the core score methodology is the same from region, from qualifier to qualifier, uh, up through the nationals. I want to spend a couple of seconds talking about the trends I've seen. As I just finished up our whole ninth season uh, that included national championship this year. So the trends that I've seen, the teams that are coming through the system now are far better than they were in the first two, three years. Uh, the competition has certainly evolved and become more complicated more complex, but the skits and the team preparations are better every year. There are teams that are competing and they're working towards their CCDC event starting, you know, in, in the next two or three months, there'll be teams that start that start working together, meet on a regular basis, planning, uh, building skill sets, going in other competitions and moving towards that. And as the system continues to grow, we see more competitors every year, uh, more schools are involved every year, we're seeing a lot of outside interest continue to grow. I've had um, a record number of recruiters and headhunters contact me this year and ask for advice on keywords that they could look for when they're doing resume searches. So recruiters and companies and headhunters are absolutely looking for not only CCDC experience, but competition experience on resumes. Because companies and the government entities absolutely recognize the value of that experience that you gain from competing events like CCDC and others. Uh, CCDC has also partnered up with Cyber Patriot. You may have heard of the, the high school cyber defense competition that's run by the Air Force Association. Uh, organization actually provides the technology behind Cyber Patriot, so we're very closely linked to them. And what we're seeing there is the flow of high school students that are competing in Cyber Patriot. They're graduating, and they immediately start look, looking for colleges and universities have competition teams for events like CCDC and other cyber competitions. So that whole trend of competition as education and as fun is continuing to grow. Uh, that's actually putting down into the middle school element and broadening across the high school element. So we're seeing more and more of that uh, as that continues to grow. We're going to see more high school students that come and they're looking for a school that has a CCDC team because they played in Cyber Patriot or something like that, and they're interested in continuing on in that competition um, mindset and inter interested in continuing to compete. So the last thing I'll say here is uh, there is the national CCDC.org website. Absolutely take a look at it. There's a lot of good information there. As well, there's links back to the regional events you need to go through. Uh, there's an older team guide posted there. Uh, Marcia and some of the folks that she's working with are building a more update team guide, uh, how to get started guide. I'm hoping she'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and that, that kind of wraps up my remarks. I'll kick it back over to uh, Portia so she can continue on. Thanks. Very much. And, um, and so let me just tell you a little bit about what the agenda is, and then I'm going to pass this over to Casey if he's ready. Um, so agenda today, we're going to have about 12 minutes to talk about um, the qualifiers, the, little, the specific elements of the scoring, the index, and these are all um, from the perspective of the regional directors in, in terms of 
what what experience is like for the teams, and also some trends in in terms of what they saw that maybe um, uh, that could improve um, teams that use that information to improve. And then the last, we'll just, just do an overall kind of wrap up of observations and, and patterns, and we'll spend about like I said, there's four topics. We'll spend a little more than ten minutes on each one. Without further ado, Casey O'Brien, are you ready to take o take over? Sure. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get, get the conversation rolling. And what I would like to see from the regional directors is is um, is is just to kind of jump in. I know it's going to be, it always makes it rough when there's more than one or two speakers, uh, but I think that we've all done this enough that we can uh, we can we can figure out how to work this. Out. So let's talk about the qualifiers. Each region, um, as Dwayne says, is tends to have nuances to it, but it has, runs by the same rules and um, uh, uh, so that it's consistent across. So um, let, can I get some feedback and some thoughts on um, the qualifiers and how a new team um, prepare for a qualifier and what existing teams could do to, um, to prepare for a qualifier? Hey, Andrew, this is Go ahead. times here. Um, we have 13 teams last year face-to-face, -face, and we knew we could never do that again. So this year we had 14 teams plus one high school team in the uh, virtual qualifier. We also had invitationals before the qualifier, which I actually recommend. Um, it's a pleasure to work with Cassia. It's a pleasure to work with David Durkee, and that's who uh, runs our uh, qualifier and our invitationals. One thing that um, David had allowed us to do is have practice time for the teams in the environment, I think was a big help. Well, I really think there are some lessons learned, positive lessons learned that we have this year from doing the qualifier, but I know we'll never go back to have more than eight teams at the regional, so I think qual qualifiers is something that will be able for us from now on. So, um, so yes, Tom, tell me about your qualifiers and, um, and, and what a team could do to prepare for them or, a new or an existing team, team could do to improve their performance. Uh, well, actually, in the Pacific Northwest, we do not have qualifiers currently. Um, our facility is large enough to have, uh, we're guessing, up to 20 teams. Uh, so we require that they are accredited schools. And that's where we're at right, right now. Area, and you're on the phone, Peg. Um, know that you can get in there and compete, get in there and, and, uh, and, and, and fight for the national. How about Durkee? Tell us about your experience. Um, appreciate uh, and the plug there for Casio. We did provide uh, compass for a number of the different regions around the, the country, the Midwest, the Western region, as Dan said, Southeast, Northeast, and Southwest. So Casio is pretty busy this year. Offering their stadium type uh, experience. Uh, and uh, um, as Dan said, since it's available 24-7, it does allow teams to be able to go in. Um, well, his this has been that as we've acquired more and more teams that, that want to participate in the CTDC, um, we're noting that every region um, is having some difficulty managing the large number of teams, especially with brick and mortar type. Of passion. So that's that's basically the driving force to build something that has a virtual type environment. It provides a number of advantages. Uh, as we said, teams are allowed to practice. And actually, um, it allows teams to compete from respective remote sites. Uh, in some development, the stadium's been up and running now for several years. So we've had to you know, work out some of the kinks in the system, problems with access and uh, managing remote sites and so forth, but, but um, we feel that that's, that's kind of a winning process compared to trying to do brick and mortar for a large number of teams. Uh, to focus exclusively on, uh, on the virtualized environment, though, um, some um, as for new teams to try and prepare for uh, CDC, uh, tracking uh, feedback on CTC for a number of years now, and we find that the better teams have student clubs. So advisors and team captains are encouraged to form clubs at their respective schools 
that uh, where the membership, of course, exceeds the uh, the numbers that are needed for a specific team. And generally speaking, those those teams um, extend the, the learning profiles that, that are provided within the, the, the school coursework itself. Uh, become more accountable to each other. Uh, it's, it provides a greater cohesive cohesive teamwork and so forth. Uh, another thing is that uh, teams might want to avail themselves. Um, we might want to hear from you know others on this uh, uh, of other part competition space that are available. Uh, one thing that's certainly available out there is the National Cyber League. Uh, the National Cyber League is, has been kind of focused in out to try and dovetail and work synergistically with the CTDC by the NCL has a fall season of preparatory type exercises that would then lead up to um, what's viewed as a, as a higher level and more robust type of competition with the CTDC. Thanks, um, Who is, you just, Oh, go ahead, uh, Amelia. He brought up something that I realized we did run into an issue where a lot of the schools did have to have qualifiers inside of their schools because they had about 20 students and only eight, of course, could come to the CCDC. So teams themselves had to basically self-select who was coming. Coming. And that required really looking at a broad range of skill sets. So what most instructors learned was that you're not just looking for the attacker or the best router person. You also needed to have, have uh, teamwork and things like that going on. And so um, let, um, let, let, let me just jump in really quickly since, um, since um, Dwayne was enough to, to bring up the guide that I am uh, writing on behalf of the National Cyber Watch Center. A lot of discussions with the coaches and, and the regional directors and the players. And um, when it comes to that team, um, some schools have very, very large teams. And there are different me methods that they use to, to, to decide on who is going to be on that roster. The CCDC is a 12-man roster, but only eight get to play on the team. And so it's there is great interest in the school. There's a couple of methods they use. One is the playoff method. Another is simply that uh, um, the players are, um, they, they, they just among themselves what would make the balance. In some schools, players help eliminate themselves because they recognize that there's someone who has stronger skills or has better teamwork or is it a leader. Um, but it's very important to consider the overall skills when it comes to the CCDC in your, in your team members. Um, and I, um, maybe, um, Lewis, um, could you um, describe um, maybe what you'll see in terms of the, um, the teams that are coming to um, help people are building teams to become a CDC um, team? Well, just described is, is what we see. We have a, a large number of teams competing in the qualifiers. We have uh, teams competing. And we see everything across the board from uh, outs to uh, self-selection, uh, the uh, lines, what we see. And what, one of the things we encourage is to try to, um, to be student-driven. Um, a lot of times you get more buy-in if you have students that are passionate about it and that are champion the effort to do the recruitment. Um, but some schools don't, don't have that. that available to them, so the, uh, the advisors or the coaches have to be the champion. Uh, so, and we actually have one team that uh, uh, probably uh, uh, people were or did volunteer for it, and that was the name of them this year. So, um, they were probably selected and told to do it. I don't know that that is the fact, but it could be. Um, so, and it's, it's across the board. Uh, a little bit of everything goes on. Yeah, and we'll see um, the, the, you mentioned that the best thing to do is to find a balance and that's absolutely true because there's so, so um, there's, there's, there's so much diversity in the competition itself. And uh, if you get a bunch of um, uh, all, all the team members of computer science uh, with no focus on any particular area, I, Feel are going to be at a disadvantage where you have folks that are really 
focus on particular areas like some in, in the uh, security aspect, network security, some in operating systems, some in coding, uh, some in, uh, in, in, in even communications and management, uh, something that, that, that should be that. Uh, one time when I uh, uh, myself, that's uh, exactly what we did is try to the team to have um, people in different areas uh, so that they could uh, cover all the bases. I think that point, covering all the bases, and I'm, I'll get to, I'm get, Vinny, I'm going to tap you to describe the bases, but I want to also describe a method, another method for um, identifying players from, from a larger group of, of people who participate. Um, some schools have capital stone course that they used to pick players from for the CDC. Um, another element of successful teams that I've identified in, in these discussions is that successful teams seem to plan for sessions. So, um, so that um, they, they not send an entire team of seniors to the CCDC because what seems to also um, determine um, success in the um, CCDC is experience in actually participating in the CCDC. Um, I understand and I um, want to discourage anyone, but I understand that there may, while there is not crying in baseball, there is crying in the CCDC. And so having that experience from a younger player may, um, early on, may help keep the team stronger in the long run. And so successful to seem to plan for the long term, whether it's student run or teacher run. So I'm going to tap you to describe some of the elements of the members of teams, um, you know, what kind of skill sets may make up a good team. Okay, if not Vinny, then how about Kyle? No, no, I didn't know if you were talking specifically speaking about me or was it Vinny yeah, or Kendall? that you jump in with um, your experience in terms of, um, of what you've seen in terms of team balance. Sure. No. Um, so, pleasure of going to some of the nationals. And some, and I've interviewed some of the teams that, that have won. And one of the, one of the biggest um, uh, gestures of two teams probably was with, you know, one one force and one with Washington a couple of years ago, and couldn't find two more differences in terms of how they trained and how they operated. Um, Air Force was very, you know, structured. They had their, you know, hierarchy of, you know, ranking, stuff like that. And uh, Washington was a little more, um, well, they did it as a group, but their approach to Things are a little different, and I think the the key that came out of that is that the CC is not a network administration competition; it's a problem solving competition. So, we're looking at skill sets, let no routers. Just more people need people that know how to add Linux or Windows, you know, any of those things. But it is not what they know. How well they are at solving a problem related to that. So, if you're, if, when you're developing a team, things that I think is clear uh, is that it's impossible to prepare anybody for the thing that they're going to face at the CCDC. Right? There's, there's, you're always going to throw something in there that they've never seen a version of uh, operating system or something like that they've never. Seen. And the question is, how fast can you orient to what's going on and adapt and and, um, and overcome? So that's that's I think the key the key that you know you're, you're training a group of problem solvers. Yeah, I agree with you. Problem solving is key, um, and uh, and so uh, Dwayne, I think um, maybe you can speak to this as a skill set or our team team. For us. Sure, absolutely. And and having the privilege of run the national championship for the last nine years, I can tell you, no team has ever won the national championship that did not have a balanced approach to their team and their skill set. 
By balanced approach, I mean, if you look at the CCDC competition, it has technical components to it, it has business components to it, it has operational components to it. So you cannot come into the competition with a pure uh, technical team, and I'm going to say you know, a, a group that only understands routers and firewalls and switches, but has no writing skills, no time management skills, so on, things like that. You have to have all those players, you have to have all those bits and pieces. So we've had uh, teams that made it to the nationals, and their team captain was a business major. Um, have, we've had sociology majors, psychology majors come through. It's not just com pure computer scientists. And actually, if you stack your team with nothing but hardcore techies, uh, you will not win the national championship. I guarantee you. The whole system is designed to prevent that. You are running a small business, so you absolutely have to have the techie side of it, but you have to have that operational and business aspect side of it as well. If I look at the, the scores from the national championship and I look at the team makeup, over the last nine years, it's absolutely held true, and and you cannot win uh, the CCDC, and certainly not at the national level, with one or two superstars. You have to have a strong team across the board. You have one or two people shoulder the load. There's just way too much work to do. Uh, that, that and and that's exactly it. Uh, that every team that ha I've talked to has said, you know, you. Every hair should be on fire is what I heard, and that, that that everyone should be working. But then I heard another wise piece of advice is uh, from that team leader who, like you said, can come from any major. Um, that, and and a lot of times, like you said, business major, psychology majors have been very successful as the as the, as the team captain. Um, one of the things that they said is, um, you know, prepare your your team to take. Breaks. Not everyone can do everything the entire time, and that you, when you, when you see someone that that it, that's getting too much stress, you, it's it's so intense that you really do really need to take those breaks. I'm going to give you the last word on um, on team balance and team formation and qualifiers. As I try to, if anyone who's um, watching my screen, um, I've gone blank as term the intern of the PowerPoint is concerned. So, um, Kyle, if you'll take it over quickly while I try to get to the next slide. You know, a huge issue that, that there, you see successful teams able to do is just communicate with each other very effectively. And say that you need to walk into the team room and, and see that they're sitting there silently and they just can read each other stairs, but to actually able to communicate, I need, you know, stuff with this, I need to uh, Come to Ben that has experience in this area. That's a big area where you really see teams able to probably a lot faster and more efficiently if they're able to communicate with each other more efficiently. It's key, isn't it? Um, that that uh, especially what I've heard is when uh, there's a, a player who's having difficulty in, in solving one of the challenges or working on an engine, um, they cannot be afraid to speak up and say, I'm running behind and I need help. And I think that that might be a difficult thing for, an, um, for a young person to admit um, in the midst of this um, difficult competition. So that transitions us to the scoring and the different elements of the um, scoring. And so in this, in this case, um, Let's talk about um, some of the things that you've seen that, that teams have done to um, to work to improve their scores. Um, scoring has, um, Dwayne, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, three elements. It's the index, it's the team activity, and it's the um, the keeping your services up. Is that correct? Yeah, those are the core components. You also have uh, orange team scores in some locations where you have remote users, remote employees. But those three main factors are really the three big biggest uh, things that can enhance or, or detract from your score. So I'm going to keep it kind of in the same order that we discussed it because it, it seemed to um, to flow smoothly. So Dan, why don't you talk about some of the um, things that, you that can um, help new players with their scoring and, and current players? Well, there's a substitute for experience. It's really tough for a team the first time out to um, be on the podium. Um, Bird played for the first time last year. They finished second, which is amazing, um, and they won this year. Um, I get schools that say, we're not ready to play. Uh, we'll play in a few years when we're ready. The reality is you're never ready. So the, the best advice I can give to ones that are thinking about this is jump into it. 
because that's how you learn to play the game. You learn by playing it, by trying to prepare the gym. Good point. Um, Amelia, what have you seen? I'm sorry, I was distracted. Could you repeat the question? Sure, we're talking about scoring. And, um, oh, and, gosh. And, and the different elements. Of and, and you've seen that maybe some advice you could give to new players or, um, or, or even experienced players in terms of scoring. I think uh, the one we've seen the biggest improvement in in our division um, is with lose points from the red team is that they write the report of how they would remediate, that they saw it, they corrected it, and then they can get some of their scores back, some of their points. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of um, teams sort of neglect doing. Um, the other thing is getting the inject in on time. Uh, just don't have the time management skills sometimes. I'd like to add to Amelia's comment. Sure. We consistently hear from our Y team that there are teams that don't read the inject. And they suffer because of that. So actually playing, they really need to understand what the deck is asking for, answer that, and not assume. So actually following directions is, um, is key. Following directions and coming in on time, it seems like a very basic skill. Um, and, you know, they come in with all these technical goal, uh, strategies and they forget that just reading directions and uh, coming in on time is key. Can you take a second and um, and fill in for the new person? Because um, Amelia addressed something I think really important and critical that how injects can um, and how completing the injects and also writing up those reports and red team activities actually affect your scoring. Absolutely. So um, Amelia referenced uh, what we typically will call incident reports. So part competition, you have a live red team whose job is to probe, break into. Uh, really mess with your systems on each of the blue teams or the competitor teams. And a big portion of running a business is being able to respond to hostile malicious traffic. We locate that within the CCDC by encouraging teams to look for the red team, stop the red team when they can, but if they can't stop the red team, if they can act or figure out that they've been penetrated, then we encourage them to write an incident report, tell us where the team came from, what their source address was, what activity they did, what they did to your system, and talk about how you would mitigate it, either how you kicked them out and kept them out, or how you could reconfigure your system or put a better mitigation process or a better protection process in place to keep it in the future. So that does allow you to recover some of the points you lose from red team activity. So you, for example, you might lose 200 points uh, if the red team breaks in and steals your customer database, including credit card numbers and street addresses and that sort of thing. A real incident response report may get you 100 points back. So you can definitely mitigate that hit from the red team by doing good incident response reports. Now, the other leading to the injects, competition is going to have injects and their business tasks. Some are things that require you to do something or implement a process. Some of them are a writing-based task. We may ask you to analyze a process or analyze uh, your the company that you have and identify all the data flows that exist and whether or not they're encrypted or should be encrypted and what sort of data you have, what the data classification is, so on and so forth. The biggest thing I've seen, and this has been a consistent trend for nine uh, years now, is teams do not read and respond to the inject. That's the number one piece of advice I give for teams every year is what's being asked of you and what you're being asked to provide. So if inject says, give me a report that needs X, Y, and Z in it and include a recommendation, the inject. That's what you're going to be scored on. Uh, you're not going to be scored for something that completely is off topic or if you don't cover all of the bullet points that are required of you in the inject, you won't get full points. So take the time to read the inject, understand what's being asked of you, and respond specifically to the inject. Make sure you've covered everything that's included in the inject that you were supposed to. Uh, absolutely, bar none. I mean, it's happening this year. We're doing uh, analyzing them. We're doing team out briefs with the national teams that came. It's the same thing. I'll say the same thing this year that I've said every year for the last nine. Read the inject. Respond to the inject. So that's that's a good point. Maybe, um, uh, David, maybe you could, um, and we don't, don't want to give away the secret sauce, but um, David Durkee, do you mind describing some of the injects that, um, that, your, that your teams see? The injects, you say? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Well, Angie, that's a broad question. I mean, yeah, there's it is a number broad, of but I think um, for new players, they'd like to have an idea of what we mean by inject. Sure. Um, well, I can set the stage on that. Just keep in mind that the CDC is an integrative event. And it's it's not. Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's been underscored here that it takes a balance of skills and it takes uh, some management savvy. Uh, I know that. I guess another way to put it is that you need strong leadership within the team so that you can coordinate the various tasks and prioritize a specific task. Though I mean, there's a plus task, but try to mirror image those that you find in the industry. Important that most of us have the attitude, if not all of us. That's run, managed, um, managed by people from industry, so that it really puts some teeth into this thing from uh, from a management perspective. That's part of the difficulty that people have, uh, that is, participants have, in terms of risk to and really addressing and documenting. Projects. And, uh, they look at it like it's a lab write-up or something on a specific task that they're doing for work in a classroom. When it is not, not called for at all. They need to be able to write to an inject that are appropriate for a management level individual. And don't need to, to get drilled down into the toothpick level of detail and minutia. They need to be able to identify and be able to address the inject and basically say that it's done and we can show you the data if you need it. Um, but specific tasks, I mean, there, there's just a plethora of them. You know, change passwords, install a different platform. Uh, change the level of your services, uh, data policy, uh, do a security scan, a security audit, uh, run run MD5 on you know all the files in your databases, um, you know check the integrity of a certain service, um, you know lock down open ports, uh, change a, a, you know a configuration on uh, uh, on your files so that you know you can improve the rules. Sometimes there's a variant too, especially in the qualifiers that we find that there's a there's kind of ringer in there that uh, basically smacks of uh, uh, frankly what you might call bad management. This this happens where they you know the manager kind of gets in his craw that hey this looks like a good thing to do you know put a certain kind of system or something not knowing that uh, we're even well knowing that they involve um, you know vulnerability. But then you know we we them actually implement as a part of the inject thread and you can see how, how um, they respond to that sort of thing. So that's kind of a broad subject, but there's, there are some uh, repositories of inject examples that are available that uh, can tap into to try and uh, get an idea of what kind of inject tasks are out there. Yeah, and uh, I'm stuttering because um, I, I'm working on this guide and, um, and, and there's this repository. I'll put it in the... Um, um, I'll put it in the in the guide and also in our thank you notes. Well, we can speak up. Uh, the uh, the repository we've had on so we've had some collections of inject from past years events, and uh, I know that's open and public for that just for managing. Hey, Dwayne, it is typically just for regional directors. We do have a couple of inject examples that are included in the. Um, the guide that's up on the national website, and then we'll be working with uh, Porsche to provide some more examples of Injex. But I can give you two that we just ran at the National Collegiate, uh, the championship here. Uh, two of them, for example, we ran an online uh, game hosting provider as our competition scenario this year. So one of the questions I asked the teams is, should we accept Bitcoins as payment? Uh, what are the implications of using Bitcoin? Is there a safe way to do it? Uh, is it a high-risk item for us? And give me a recommendation from a security standpoint as to whether we should use and accept Bitcoin payments or not. Uh, the other examples of an inject we gave them this year was um, we gave each of them a flash drive and said our CEO uh, this flash drive. He let his kids borrow it. When he plugged it back in, it did something weird. And not exactly sure what's on it. Can you analyze it forensically? See what's in there? Is there any malware on it? If so, what did it do? Uh, give me specifics, and then what sort of mitigation efforts do we need to do uh, with flash drive and where it was plugged into? So the 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 impacts vary dramatically, and that's one of the cool things about the event is they're vastly different between competitions. All great examples, and I think that really help a new player uh, an idea. And those who didn't make it to the nationals understand what they could expect as some of really challenging items. Um, I want to. We have. Um, we're kind of. Uh, 
straddling two subjects, scoring and index. And I want to steer it back. We can get back to index, but I want to steer it back to scoring a little bit. I understand Casey has a question about uh, a question to address to the group about um, scoring. Yeah, this is Casey O'Brien. I'm the executive director of the National Cyber Watch Center, and I was the Mid Atlantic Cyber Defense Competition director from 2005 to 2012. And question for the for doing the regional directors related to scoring, which is do do you all make scores publicly available during the competition? Um, do you have some kind of scoreboard of sorts, and if not, why do you not? I'll go first. At the national championship, we have a scoreboard that runs in our operations center that is publicly available. People can come in and see it. Uh, team members cannot come in and see it. They'll find out their score at the end of it. Uh, we publish them outside of the venue. Uh, unless teams choose to do that, the only thing that we release is the rankings of the top three teams. But the event itself, yes, we have a live scoreboard. You can come through and, and check it out if you're part of a tour or if you're one of the attendees. You can see it. Um, we do not. Um, and one of the reasons is we want to discourage the teams that may be behind in the beginning. But they see that, like, oh, we're doing horrible compared to, you know, whatever team. Uh, the teams may just, you know, they're, they might get more inspired or they might get very discouraged. So sort of a toss-up uh, at this point. I think that sense. The, um, the, the, well, what I understand, especially from players in the first experience, um, I think they automatically presume that they're doing worse than everyone else. Um, so if that was confirmed for them, um, you're right. You, you might have um, you might have people who are dropping out, and anything can and does happen at the CCPC. Um, uh, why don't uh, and why don't you pick up your with your thoughts on index and scoring? Um, we haven't discussed a lot about um, team activity or um, orange team activity. If, if admittedly, has that or um, or, or the um, or even your services. Well, from a big picture perspective, um, it like to managing your team and managing the role that they play. So the reason why I say that is oftentimes in the qualifiers, we see teams totally ignore the injects. Um, and if they don't complete injects in the qualifier, they will not be one of the top eight teams. That's much a given. Um, why do they ignore the injects? Well, they get caught up with their systems being attacked and systems going down. Um, folks on those things, uh, and, and, and they feel like the X aren't as important as keeping the systems up. Uh, certainly, some injects they cannot complete um, if certain systems are down. So uh, we try to reinforce the fact that injects are just as important as any other component in the uh, three scoring areas. So, um, we do that every year. Uh, and the systems go down quickly. Uh, once the red team starts their activities in the qualifier and in the on-site competition, um, they start going down quickly. And see with that is because they don't pay attention to their basics. Uh, they learn in the Entry security course, uh, thanking her level when we come into the competition and, and focus on the basic stuff like changing passwords, changing usernames, disabling accounts that aren't needed. Um, that thing. So, so it's all tied together in that uh, once they start getting attacked, that their focus is, is, is trying to get the systems back up and they don't really pay close attention to the injects that they that point, uh, they don't really understand the importance to, of doing that. They really, the team really has to manage the team to ensure that all the bases are being covered, including completing the engine checks. That makes sense. So, so let's um, let me give um, Vinny and Kyle a chance to share their thoughts on index and scoring. Um, why don't I start with you? Give us a chance to kind of give your thoughts about injects and scoring and, and, and what that means to current and new players. One of the 
one of the things, you know, kind of to reiterate everyone, there there is a stigma when students come into the competition that it's a purely service based event and then the injects are just kind of something extra on the side. But they tell them, you know, we talk about it all the time, but it it's size the injects and the writing test really are of their overall score. One thing that we've done a little bit of to try to bridge that gap a little bit is start our injects actually result in additional scored services. So one of those business tasks from the CEO is even going to pull up on or up on the service board to be up and running so that you know that you see there's actually a real time in with all of that. And also to weigh in on uh, making scores available, make the overall numeric scores available here because, uh, I think Amelia said it, it can be discouraging if we have teams with you know, radically different uh, results in the event. But we make a, a status board for services publicly available to the entire event. So see that, you know, the, the team just launched a large attack and their board just went red or any variation like that. What are your thoughts on um, injection scoring? I think it's useful to make sure that the injects are national CCD inject like I think times uh, different regions um, going to regions that uh, this should help prepare the, the, the regions for nationals. Um, is I, in a couple of the regions that I've worked with, I think it's helpful to different injects or each of the injects to various elements of say like the nice framework or something like that where it's like okay this inject that can actually uh, you can look at the tasks in the nice framework and say hey this is what this came from and to do like rip from the headline the uh, loader of ccdc where, where you tie to things that are actually happening and it also kind of injects a certain Unintended. It injects a kind of uh, kind of funness to the, the injects. I love the idea of keeping them current, and we, and and that's one of the good things about the CCD is they every year it, it addresses a critical area of need in, um, in information assurance and, and, and in cybersecurity. So um, so that is definitely a way to prepare our future um, for cybersecurity. Uh, folks, um, we have uh, a few minutes left, and I know we can go on. And I have about 85 million other things I'd like to address. Um, um, and so um, I'm going to just um, I'm start off this last round of comments by saying that um, we expect that the um, the guide that we are creating for the National Cyber Web Center to be up, in, um, up at least by fall, um, if not sooner. And and we all, and there is lots of good information in terms of resources and specifics in terms of engines and red team activity and orange team activity. And that can help you prepare and um, and think about the competition um, in terms of, of and developing your own strategy. Um, so I just want to let you know that is I'm going to go through this and then I'll finish up with Dwayne and Casey and let them give them your final. Um, the last thing I think I would like to just um, uh, cover is, um, is in terms of your own personal observations and patterns, we've given them advice in terms of following the index. Maybe the resource something that you would like to direct them to. I know that, um, and I'm going to steal yours, Lewis, because um, you linked it early, so now you have to come up with another one. The, um, the uh, Mid-Atlantic CCDC um, has um, has created a presentation from the perspective of um, Red Team, and it's uh, it's the Red Team, their Red Team coordinator, Rob Fuller, created a presentation called How to Win, and I will include that in the thank you presentation, uh, thank you uh, note that we'll be sending out, but um, so I just wanted to let you know that that resource is available and is coming, and then the um, the one that, the, that we're creating from the National CCDC. So, so I'm going to start in the same order that we've been going. Um, so pre prepare your final comments. We'll start with Dan Manson. I just think it's been a tremendous experience being involved in CDCs. Uh, we started in 2008. Um, 
I think we're just starting to see the number of schools that can participate in this. One of the, the biggest challenges that I've had the last few years is how do we scale? But this is the year we finally went to the virtual regional virtual qualifiers, and I think we have a way to do so. Uh, I think the more we can provide training, uh, virtual and face-to-face -face training, for students, especially for coaches, I think the better. I think coaches are really a weak link in um, expanding CCDC. What I, I see is a very variance of involvement by coaches. And so there's a way to have coaches training. I think that could be very helpful. Thank you, Amelia. Um, I will echo what he said. Uh, this is our seventh year, um, our sixth official year doing this. And as I mentioned, we hope to expand up to 20 teams because on the We Are Live, uh, the actual infrastructure is virtual. Uh, adding the orange team uh, this year was just an absolute blast where the students had to give good customer service and still abide by the policies. So that was fun. Uh, the red team and students not changing the passwords. That was the one thing the red team said was we didn't use any decryption tools at all because too many teams had never changed the default. Basic, basic security um, knowledge is still very, very critical. And the thing about the coaches not knowing how to get going, I think we really need to address. And um, there's a very, very good post by Dwayne um, in the CCC blog. Is, um, don't forget the basics. Um, I've included a lot of that information in the guide again, but it doesn't hurt to return back and put this out. Um, to get to post because it is just that, Amelia. Good thought. Um, let's move on to David Durkee. Hey, folks, everything above. Uh, someone said, you know, back to the basics kind of thing, and I think that, that's a strong point in hand for those of us that be, believe in the CCDC. Uh, people miss a lot of the obvious, especially in the qualifiers. Uh, Tony mentioned, um, I think it was a mention, just changing passwords, from basic as that. You know, we have a, a Kind of a persistence of uh, people not changing passwords, uh, uh, you know, walls and, and vital services uh, during a qualifier. Uh, usually, they learn that after the first event, um, and, and kind of a sentiment too that, that teams, respect with any anyone's school, they kind of have to go through an event like that to kind of get the ropes on what a competition is all about. Uh, and I guess I could leave you with a quote from uh, you know, coaches. That's the CCDC provides you uh, five years of experience, eight hours. Um, so it's uh, you know it is a rock and sock event. Uh, the trend in competition, CC competition, has been to place more emphasis on the injects. Like in the first few years, we had very few injects, and now it's you know we wow. And, um, if we watch, um, if we see people that aren't busy, um, you know we we got to roll out more activity. So. Uh, we don't see uh, this as a deodorant stress test, then uh, we, we're not doing our job. Deodorant stress test. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to, before I move on to, um, I, I wanted. There's a student in our, our group in our group and heard a, a comment in, in chat about the scoring and how important the scoring is to him. He says, as a student, I want to I want to know how close I was to the team ahead of me for next year. Petition is competition. We repeat to win. Sure, it's not good to lose, but if we can do better than last year, that'd be good enough motivation for the team. So scoring is really important to them, that, that, they, they, that they see that they're improving. Uh, Lewis, what are your thoughts, final thoughts? We get asked, I'm sure all of us get asked a lot, how, how can we prepare for the CCDC? And one of the first things I tell them is go to class. Um, <laughs> that's where you're learning. And, and, you know, one of the original purposes of the entire event was to provide a, a for faculty to assess how well their students are learning what they're being taught in the classroom. Now, obviously, that they're being taught in the classroom isn't going to be enough to to win the CCDC, um, but to start and and really that's something they have to do is go to class, pay attention to class, learn as much as they can. 
may come into an event such as this and, and their skills, test their knowledge, see see how well they're able to apply what they've learned. Um, another great opportunity that we have now that we didn't have years ago is the National Cyber League. So with the National Cyber League takes place in the fall, that's a great place for people to go to um, uh, actually test their skills again there as an individual to see what they're doing. And, and uh, I would even suggest that uh, advisors may want to use that to see how they want to make up their team. A lot of good information comes out of that. And it's, a, it's a great competition. Granted, it's not a, an in-defend competition like the CCDC, but it's a good way to, to assess um, the student's ability to apply the knowledge. And in fact, the uh, the competition, the actual competition piece of it, uh, it's placed in the same environment that we run in our virtual flyers. So folks that are in the Mid-Atlantic can uh, actually use that to get familiar with uh, our choir environment. Um, so again, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll keep beating the dead horse, change passwords, change your passwords. We actually posted a picture on our Facebook page um, prior to the uh, qualifiers. That was a uh, slide from um, last year's Red Team debrief. Uh, uh, title, what could you have done better? And there's three lines in the set of passwords. And again, this year, same problem. Uh, uh, somebody said earlier that they, uh, the red team didn't even have to use any kind of uh, to break the passwords, and we had the same problem this year. So base basics, basics are, are really, really important. Thanks. Um, Vinny, what are your thoughts? I think the number of the students from when this first started to what we're seeing the students being able to do and what they're even talking about now has been interesting. And that's, I think, um, a real commitment to the competition and, and, you know, the CDC itself. It's really on the level uh, of, of expertise for all the students. And I think that that trickles upwards to even students who get our CCDC students. So, um, I, you know, bravo. I think uh, this is, uh, everybody would agree, this is a great event and it's really helping to improve the cyber core, right? The, the students that are on the front line of defending uh, the name's information. So, bravo. That's a, that's a good sentiment. I also, um, I want to, um, uh, before, uh, pass it on to Kyle and then finally, um, and Casey, um, I want to thank you all for letting us go a little bit long on this. Um, it's really valuable um, information that I'm glad we can share. I hope um, I hope it won't be the last of the CCDC um, webinars. Um, we have um, we have um, student questions um, uh, uh, coming uh, coming up. You know, there's um, um, more things about scoring and images of the of the um, of the competition environment and. Um, and I'll try to address those in a follow-up email um, because there are still lingering questions. Um, and, uh, so, Kyle, what are your final thoughts about um, the observations and patterns that you've seen? Final observation, I can tell this event has really been a success. We can say the amount of excitement and engagement there's in this. They love with the red team and find out what happened and then I know they're going back to their respective schools and practices, and they're trying what that red team member told them about. They're really getting so involved and so ingrained in this, and they're they're just loving every minute of it. So that's why I think the, the this event has just been awesome for all of us. And I can again reiterate the the key basics, especially you know, make their team work a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they, everyone has been making it a little bit too easy. Uh, so, uh, so maybe maybe next year is the year that the um, the blue team get out on the the, the red team. Um, so um, before I pass this on to um, first Dwayne and then Casey, I want to thank everyone for attending, and I want to thank um, all the regional directors, um, Casey O'Brien and and Dwayne Williams, um, for their um, time and support of this event. I've really enjoyed being with you, and I thank you all for coming. But there's still more summative thoughts coming from Dwayne. 
I, I, I want to echo something Dan said earlier, and that is uh, just play. If you're concerned at all about whether your team is ready, nobody's ever ready for this. Absolutely jump in. Do not wait for another season. Don't wait for next year. Don't wait till you get a certain piece of equipment or a certain coach or a player. Just play. Jump next season. The qualifying events, the regional events, I'll learn a ton from them. They're excellent experience. They look great on your resume. Um, they're fun and they're interesting. They're exciting. So absolutely play. Never be afraid to jump in. Uh, last thing is, if you're at a, a school and you're struggling to find a coach or find a sponsor, uh, there are teams that have literally won the national championship by being self-taught. The Washington team, the first year they won, was almost completely a self-taught team. They definitely had some support from their faculty advisor and their sponsors, but they really drove themselves to win that event. That was the students that got themselves together. Um, they organized. They trained. They did everything that they could possibly in their own before they reached out for support. So if you're in a situation where you're really struggling to find somebody, absolutely reach out. Uh, start your own organization and get your students together and just do it. I want to thank uh, primarily Dwayne, really, um, for a couple of things. You know, one, just working with us on this guide to help um, coaches and players prepare. And then we are going to we're going to use a print-on-demand model for that, so it'll be available for free electronically. Um, the plan is to kind of start pushing that out uh, in the fall, um, right around you know, perhaps September, October, when coaches are thinking about getting teams together and really promote that. Uh, it's going to be a great resource to help prepare. Um, and Dwayne's been instrumental on helping us with that. But also, I think the folks at University of Texas, San Antonio, Kevin and Jess and, um, and Dwayne and Greg, they've, they've done something that's really, really difficult, which is they've, they've given the regions a lot of autonomy to experiment and try new things and provide a forum for the competition directors to get together and share what's working and what's not working. Um, and um, But still, you know, try to maintain some semblance of coherence um, and, and balance all that. And that's, that's not easy um, to do. And, um, and uh, you know, somebody who's been involved with this since the beginning, it's really incredible to see its growth. And I, and I think that's partly because of the TSA style. So I just I just wanted to say that, um, and thank everybody for coming. Porsche, can you go to the next uh, the next couple well, next two slides there? Um, so we got to check your inboxes for future uh, webinar invitations. This today was being recorded um, today's webinar, and I in the chat room um, I posted a link where it will be. It'll probably be available um, sometime early next week. Feel free to to that far and wide, and uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And thanks, thanks to everybody, and thanks, Portia. Great job facilitating the webinar today.